Hello, welcome. Here we're talking about rational functions, and as you can see I'm excited about this topic. What is a rational function? Well, a rational function, let's use r of x to denote that. This is a rational function. It's the ratio of two polynomial functions. I'm going to call them p and d. And what, what's amazing about this is that we have a rational function, and what we're going to get is a graph that's not continuous. And that's interesting to me because this polynomial, by definition, has to be smooth and continuous, and so does this one. But with division, we have to watch out for dividing by zero. So it's interesting then that we're able to take two things that are smooth and continuous and essentially divide them and break that concept. And that has to do essentially with the idea that whenever we're dividing, whenever this polynomial down here equals zero, the rational function will be undefined. So it kind of makes sense, but I love that contrast. We can take polynomials, put them together, and the result is something that's uncharacteristic of polynomials. And what we want to do is make sense of rational functions in an intuitive way. So for example, if I wrote out this rational function, take a polynomial, x squared plus x minus six, it's a parabola, and we say, well, what if we divide that parabola by a linear function, x minus four? What would this graph look like and how can we make sense of it? So obviously you can plug this into a graphing function calculator or an application. There's nothing wrong with that, and we will do that, in fact. But I think it's important to make sense of it intuitively. What's the intuition behind it? And what we're essentially looking at, don't forget this, we're taking a quadratic and looking at the ratio between the outputs of this quadratic and the outputs of this linear function. And what we could do is we could say, all right, what are the inputs and outputs of the quadratic? What are the inputs and outputs of this linear function? And divide them and go through it kind of as a brute force, plugging in values. We can pick all types of values for x to plug into it and then look at the behavior. But that's really kind of our last resort, and that seems less fun to me. I want to think about this in a kind of systematic and intuitive way and see what I can get away with without just plugging numbers in. So let's do that. So I'm going to rewrite the function to help myself focus. And we start by looking at the fact that, well, this graph probably has x-intercepts and y-intercepts. And let's investigate that. So let's first start with x-intercepts. Now x-intercepts, as you know, they cross the x-axis and they're of the form, I'm going to write as some number a, comma, zero. That just means that y is zero whenever you're dealing with an x-intercept. So this is our y value, it's our output r of x, right? That's the y value. So zero is going to equal this polynomial function over this polynomial function. So it's going to be x squared plus x minus six over x minus four. And I want to know when does this equal zero? That would give you my x intercepts. Perhaps the easiest way to do that is just to factor the numerator, x plus 3 times x minus 2. And this is going to be equal to 0, so I could multiply both sides by x minus 4. And what's left is my numerator, this thing right here. So we want to know when does this numerator equal 0. Well, that happens when um, x is negative 3 and y is, and x, or x is 2. So we have two x-intercepts. We're getting somewhere. We're getting a picture of this graph. Let's start graphing that. So I've got negative 3, 0, and I've got 2, 0. I'm going to use blue. So negative 1, 2, 3, and then 2, 0, and I'll label them. So this is negative 3, 0, and this is 2, 0. We're getting somewhere already. Isn't that exciting? Let's move on. Got our x-intercepts, let's go for the y-intercepts. Now the y-intercepts, of course, are in a different form where you have zero comma b. So y-intercepts are zero, the x-value is zero now. We wanna find the intercept value b, I like to call it that. That just tells me we're plugging in zero for the x-values and whatever that output is, that's our, our y-intercept. I like to plug it into the original form, but you can plug it into either one. Zero squared plus zero minus six over zero minus four, that's just negative six over negative four. So our y-intercept, when we plug in zero, the output is positive one and a half. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Go here, let's plot that out. So zero, here's one, here's a half. And we're gonna label that. Well, what else can we do? Well, one of the essential features is that we're dividing by uh, a linear function. And by dividing by that, that polynomial, we wanna know when it's undefined. 
we want to know when we're dividing by 0. So if we look at the equation that we have, it's x squared plus x minus 6 over x minus 4, we can look at vertical asymptotes. Those are the vertical lines we are approaching but never quite reaching because those represent when our function is undefined. So it's when r of x is undefined, specifically when our denominator is 0. So when x minus 4 is equal to 0, this would be undefined. So we say x minus 4 can't be 0. Add 4 to both sides, therefore x cannot be 4. And that it will be a vertical asymptote. If you plug in 4, this thing is going to be undefined. Now, I should say also, it doesn't guarantee that it's a vertical asymptote, but we will look at cases where when you plug in a value that makes it undefined, that it is a vertical asymptote. It's also possible that it could be a, just a hole in the graph, which we'll see in a moment. Um, but you can analyze that in different ways, and I'll, I'll show you that. So right here, we've got a vertical asymptote at 4. So here's 2, 3, 4. So it just means there's essentially this line. I like to represent it with dashes. There's this line that we can approach, and it's literally when x is 4, that we can approach but never reach. So I'm going to just keep saying that up. All right, so we've got that boundary, and we can't cross it. Like, so the function can't go like this, right? It can't do that. What it has to do with the asymptote is approach it. So it's gonna, there's only two options at this point. It looks to me it's kind of going like this, and it really wants to keep going down. We don't know that it'll do that yet, but because it could do, for example, it could do this. It's possible it just curves right back up. But it's unlikely. It's trending this way. I think it's going to go down. But really, the idea is it can approach the asymptote either reaching positive infinity or it can approach it going downward, reaching negative infinity. We need to find out which of those two is it doing. Is it going to curve up or go down? And the way to do that is to figure out the output of the function as it gets really close to this asymptote. Close. How close is, is close enough? Well, that's I'm certainly, I'm, I'm sure it's debatable and depends. But in general, for our class, if you're within one tenth, you're close enough. You'll be able to figure it out. So I'll make sure all of our functions are, um, you can analyze them by finding out what's happening within one tenth of your asymptote. So we want to say, okay, we're coming at the asymptote from the left, and then from the right, we should also see what's happening. So we're going to go at four from the left and at four from the right and see what's happening within one tenth of that asymptote, and you'll get it. What am I talking about? Well, the next thing you want to look at is after we find those vertical asymptotes, it's the behavior near them. Behavior near VA, vertical asymptote. So we'll say about one-tenth away. That should do it. Okay, so when we approach 4 from the left, this is how we write it. X is approaching 4 from the left. So what we would do is maybe plug in a value one-tenth to the left of 4, say 3.9, plug it into our function and figure out is it positive or negative. So 3.9, right? I'm going to plug in the factored form. It's plus 3, and then 3.9 minus 2, all over 3.9 minus 4. Now, we don't need to know the exact values. We just need to know whether it's positive or negative. So this is positive and positive and negative. So we have a positive times a positive over a negative, and that's a negative ratio. So as we're getting close to the asymptote from the left, it's negative. So that does confirm, okay, we can do a little bit more sketching, what's happening between this point and towards the asymptote. And you could plug in 3 to see where the output is, 3 and a half, and get more and more accurate, but this is enough. So we know now that the graph is doing something, let me make it a little thicker, this something like this. And again, we're sketching, it's not a perfect graph. We don't know what's happening over here, and now we need to find out what's happening on the other side, but we know this so far. So let's go at 4 from the right. Woohoo! Okay, x is going at 4 from the right, from the positive direction. So we plug in 4.1, and when we do that, you'll essentially get three positive results, and that's positive. But I'm still a little confused, because... If I look over here, I don't have much information on how many points to guide me. Like, what's it doing? Is it coming up like this? Is it maybe up here, coming down and coming up? I need 
a better sketch. I know it's going to be approaching positive infinity, but I don't know exactly how it's going to be doing that. So we need more info. What else can we find? We have our intercepts, we have our x, we have our y, we have our vertical asymptote and our behavior near the vertical asymptote. Another thing we can explore are horizontal asymptotes. I'm just going to write, I'm going to write HA because I get tired of writing these long words. Is that wrong? I don't know. So horizontal asymptotes. Now what this means is what's going to happen as x approaches positive or negative infinity. As, this, as the end behavior of this function essentially is x getting really big in a positive or negative way, is our function approaching some horizontal line, some y value, which makes sense, right? Because with the vertical, we're approaching an x value, a vertical line. Here we're approaching a horizontal line, a y value. So there's some y equals line maybe that we're approaching. We want to know that. But in our case, in our case, wah, wah, r of x does not, doesn't have any horizontal asymptote. How could I know that? Well, let's take a look. There are basically three things that can happen when you have a horizontal asymptote. Okay, so first case, our case, x squared plus x minus 6 over x minus 4. And that's not minus 6, minus 4. This is a case where there's no horizontal asymptote. And you don't need to memorize it. I'll tell you what's going on. But basically, this exponent is larger than this one. The degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator. So when that happens, there's no horizontal asymptote. Why? Well, because as x approaches positive infinity, this function, r of x, approaches positive infinity. The degree up top is going to matter so much more, which the whole ratio is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. That'll outweigh the x in the bottom. And, um, and likewise, if it's approaching negative infinity, in this case, uh, negative infinity squared is a, po you know, it's going to give some big positive result as well. And then, but we're dividing it by a negative value down here. So even though it'll be approaching negative infinity, that ratio will be negative. So it's approaching negative infinity. So, it's in, so we're not approaching a horizontal line so much as we're approaching infinite positive and infinite negative outputs. It's going up and down forever. And that'll happen, I'll say that again, whenever the degree of your numerator is bigger than the degree of your denominator. But what if we switch it around? Let's take the reciprocal. This, this will give us case two. So whenever the reverse is true, whenever the degree on the bottom is larger than the degree on top, that denominator value as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, think about what it's going to do. It's going to outweigh the value up top. So eventually, in this fraction, your numerator is getting bigger, but the denominator is getting bigger at a faster pace. So that means that the horizontal asymptote doesn't exist, and it's at zero. This is going to approach zero, because as x approaches positive or negative infinity, r of x will approach zero. And that's the second case. And the third case I think is fascinating, and we'll take a look at this. In the third case, let's just change our, our rational function. We have x squared plus x minus 6 over x squared minus 4. I made the powers the same. The degree is the same of the top and the bottom, excuse me. When that happens, um, I think it's beautiful here, there's, an, there's a horizontal asymptote at, let's call this, some leading coefficient a and some leading coefficient b at a divided by b. So this means as x is approaching positive or negative infinity, as x approaches positive or negative infinity, that our function is going to approach a horizontal line a over b, which is exactly what we have here, and, uh, exactly what we have in this case. Not, not in our problem. And that, that, that means the degrees are equal. You look at the ratio of the leading coefficients. We can make sense of that if we look at the pictures. Here's, here's the graph. I'll spoil a little bit of it. There's more to it. But you can see the curvature is not really leveling out in this picture. In the second case, I took the reciprocal. And you can see something interesting happens here. There are actually two vertical asymptotes. There are two values where it's undefined. And you can just factor out the, the denominator to see, oh, yeah, that's at um, 2 and negative 3, the factors of the quadratic when it's undefined. And then over here, in this case, you can see that, interestingly enough, there's only one vertical asymptote, right? Negative 2 squared minus 4 is 0. But at 2, you can tell it's undefined. But if you click on it, it's, there's a hole there. Because if you plug in 2, 2 squared minus 4 is also 0. And you can't divide by 0. 
And that's not an asymptote, which I'm, we're not really going to deal with that much, but you could tell by examining the behavior of the function as it gets closer. You'd have to test several inputs to see what's happening, but you would know that it's not really trending towards positive or negative infinity. It's approaching, it's approaching 2 exactly, right, but never reaching it. So that's a different case, but uh, again, that could happen. Now, if, if I start to play around with this, let me zoom out a little bit here. You can see how this is true. If I think for a progression, I said, okay, first, if I do two up top, you can see now, now let's check the horizontal asymptote. Right now, there's a horizontal asymptote at, um, at 1. So y equals 1. There it is. And that's the ratio of the leading coefficients here. If I make this 2, you'll see it, it's not no longer 1. The horizontal asymptote is at 2. You can see it's still that ratio of leading coefficients. If I make the bottom two, it'll hop back down to one, and it changes your function a little bit, and the shape of it's changing, but just focus on the horizontal aspect of it, right? It's approaching that horizontal asymptote. And if I make this eight up here, boom, it changes the shape again, but look, the horizontal asymptote will be at eight divided by two, it'll be at four. So why is this happening? Well, if we think about what's going on with as we approach infinity, these leading terms will matter the most. And x squared over itself, they're going to essentially cancel each other out. And the only thing that's going to remain is the ratio of leading coefficients, which is what's happening here. That's a beautiful thing. But wait a minute, what do we do about our graph? What do we do when there's no horizontal asymptote? Do we just stop? Do we give up? No. We do something. And how do we deal with it? Dun, dun, dun. We deal with it using polynomial long division. This will show us the way of what's happening as x approaches infinity. Right? This ties together the division algorithm with our understanding of rational functions. So what do we do? Well, in our case, we had a numerator of x squared plus x minus 6, and we want to divide it by x minus 4. So we go through our, our algorithm. Take the leading terms and divide them. That gives us x. Distribute this to our divisor. We get x squared minus 4x and subtract to find the remainder. Hang in there with me. We get 5x, and then we're subtracting 6. Now we divide again our leading terms, 5x divided by x, and we get 5. Distribute the 5, we get 5x minus 20 and subtract. That gives us negative 6 minus negative 20 is 14. Now what this means is that we just rewrote our function in a different way. That equals our quotient, x plus 5, plus our remainder over our divisor. Why is this important? Because something beautiful is being shown right here. When you look at this and you say as x approaches positive or negative infinity, that's the behavior, the end behavior that we're looking at, we can say something very precisely about this function, this part of the function specifically. As this, is, as this denominator is getting really large, this piece approaches 0. So this approaches zero as x approaches positive or negative infinity. So here, let me say as x approaches positive or negative infinity, this function will approach not a horizontal line, but a linear line. And that's crazy. Let's look at this. If I, if I type out y equals x plus 5, and I hide this old function, here's our function, you can see it's starting to happen, but then as I zoom out, holy smokes, we are approaching that line almost precisely. And if I zoom over a little bit, you see there's basically no difference. Right? You can see how quick that happens. So in our graph right here, we now have enough information to finish. Woohoo! So now we just want to plot x plus 5, and then we've got our graph. It's amazing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here it is. It's a little bit, it's not a perfect graph. There it goes. Slope is 1, the intercept is plus 5, and you can see now, this is that line. This, we're actually going to approach an asymptote like this. Now, I did not plan accordingly. I'll do a better job when I do this uh, in class. But basically here, this, you can see, is now approaching the horizontal asymptote. It's important to note that we, we wouldn't know for sure if it crosses it and then comes back. You can cross slant or horizontal asymptotes. That can happen. But here, we're going to approach it. It looks beautiful. On this side, we know it, it's not going to go like this. You can see from the graph on Desmos, it is climbing towards infinity. You'd probably get away with just plugging in one value. If you plugged in 3, 4, 5, 6, you would see it's above the line at that point, and you could infer that the graph fits right in here. 
badly drawn by me, but it fits there. And that is how we sketch this out. And I hope this helped. Thanks.